Hi guys, I have been asked to uh, do a little video uh, on weapon making. Um, not sure if I'm the best person to do this. Uh, I haven't been, I've been making weapons for a couple of years, but I've only made um, a handful of weapons in the last six months. Uh, but when I say weapons, I'm, I'm talking about Baka weapons, obviously. Um, uh, made for LARPs. If you're not familiar with that, uh, you can go check out our website, serenef.com. Uh, it's a live action role playing game. It's set in medieval settings, uh, fun stuff like that. So, without further ado, what I'm actually going to do is put the uh, my GoPro on my head uh, so I can have my hands free. And uh, you can see what I see. So, alright. All right, well, this is my back porch. So hopefully I haven't um, completely at an angle. Hopefully I got a good angle. Um, obviously that doesn't have a display going on. So I've already prepped some things and what we're gonna make today is a short sword. Um, I went to our, our, our rule book um, and flipped to the back. Inside that rule book is the Instructions on uh, not, there are some instructions on how to create weapons. Uh, so you, most of what I'm going to be doing is, is right out of that. I'm, I'm going to show you a couple kind of pro tips, some things I've learned over the years that makes your life a little bit easier. Um, one of the first things you have to do though is get a basic design. Uh, you have to know what you're doing before you can do anything else. I went ahead and uh, decided what the diameters I needed, what size weapon I wanted. Uh, based on my chart, that's why I started talking about in the first place, is I, I did take my chart, figure out what size pipe I needed. So I knew uh, I wanted a 35 inch pipe. So handy dandy tape. And, you know, uh, I ended up with 36. That's okay, it doesn't have to be perfect. So uh, I got me a little three foot piece here. Um, but I know that is within my, uh, excuse me, not short sword, that's within the side of long sword. Got a 27, 27 inch um, uh, pipe foam here. Now one of the things, so if you're shooting for exactly 35 inches, you do not want to cut a 35 inch pipe. You're going to want to cut a 34, 33, probably 33 minimum. Um, because by the time you add 2 inches at the top, uh, for your for your tip, you're gonna end up uh, eating up your excess still. I always try to don't I don't shoot for the minimums. I don't shoot for the maximums. I I, I do what feels right uh, based on the size of the cross guard I'm gonna have. Uh, you know, some people request a longer hilt. Some people you know want a short hilt. I personally love long hilts. Um, that's my tip phone. So I've, I've already went ahead and prepped a lot of things we're going to do here. So I've got my, my uh, pipe cut. I've got my pipe foam. Um, so without further ado, one of the things I usually like to do is I always give myself a little bit more room on the foam. I don't know if you can see this how well. So when I'm measuring things out, I kind of leave it like just a just a smidge over because I don't want my pipe even with my pipe foam so I leave a smidge over and I mark myself a spot on the uh, on my pipe now the reason I do this will be obvious in a minute because um, when I put my pipe on I don't cut it and put it on unless I'm working with half inch this is three quarter um, so I'm working with three quarter and you can see that that's a pretty snug fit um, and I'm going to need to know exactly where to pull this to because this will start stretching and it'll start distorting and we need to know where to stop so I can actually snug this all back up and get it all back shape so I don't have you know, my pipe pulled out or my pipe pushed in so you definitely want to mark yourself uh, in a minute another thing I usually do to kind of make my life easier is uh take my tape um, which I'm actually uh, experimenting some tapes here this is a um, sure tape um, brand tape 
I've uh, not had the world's best luck with SureTape recently, but I'm hoping with a different uh, model it, it should do okay. Um, so we're gonna we're giving it a try. It's a little thicker than I like, but that's okay. So one of the things I like to do right off the bat is go ahead and, and run me a line right down on that seam. Now, again, this is not have, how you have to do it. This is how I like to do it. Now the reason I do this is when I start to put when I start to put it on in a minute, um, I like to make sure it's not going to come apart on me. Now another thing, one of the disadvantages of doing it this way is you got to be careful. Careful, it's not going to curl up too bad on you because if you pull it too tight, like you want to, it you end up with a banana. We don't want a banana. So you notice I also left a little uh, tail here. Uh, I always do that. Uh, that helps me when I go to put my cross guard on, um, which we're going to be using blue camp foam. When I go to put my cross guard on, I have something to go ahead and tie my blade directly into my cross guard. What I'm going to do now is go ahead and just close this off. You can use your electrical tape. This is just a piece of extra gaff, uh, gaffers out of tape when I was uh, doing some experiments. So what I'm doing now is I'm going to uh, spray adhesive glue inside my pipe foam. Now the reason I do this is so when I do put this on uh, and I do glue this on I have to do it quick but down the road I don't want this sliding around on me. Because even though it's a nice snug fit, it will twist and it will will give that will give, and I don't want that um, down the road. It's going to make my my pipes last a little longer. Um, that's just something I've personally done. I'm just using some uh, spray adhesive. Um, you can get it at Walmart. Uh, there's different strengths. Uh, my personal favorite is actually this one here, uh, but I'm out of. So I'm trying this one out. Now you notice I'm putting an absolute ton in here. Uh, the reason being is because I actually want it liquidy. Remember my mark I made earlier? And it start, uh, the glue's already started set. So I'm right on my, pretty much right on my mark. Now the reason I put that uh, that tip of the part on the tip is so I don't shoot glue out the top. See, it's set. That ain't going anywhere. Nice and snug. I have a nice good line. My hands, I've never had that happen before. It had glue coming out of the bottom. Uh, I usually put a top over, and I just didn't think about doing it. I usually uh, put a top over my pipe. Um, the reason I wrap these is just to keep the, that nice sharp edge. Uh, even after I've, I've cleaned them up with a knife, that nice sharp edge can eat through your uh, pipe over time or your foam over time. I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish blading this out. Um, tape this out real quick. Now again guys, I'm using gaff tape. You can use duct tape. Um, duct tape works just fine. I've had some people recently using Gorilla Glue or Gorilla Tape and swearing by it, saying that's some of the best stuff they've used. Um, I'm a fan of gaff tape. Now that being said, not all gaff tape is being is created equal. Um, some gaff sticks better. Some staff. Some gaff is heavier. Some gaff is thinner. Some gaff uh, is real vinyl and it doesn't take paint well. So you gotta kinda play with it. Uh, your best uh, best bet is to uh, ask around. And I don't I almost know if you can see this. This is that uh, that sure tape I was telling you. And it's, it's super thick. Um, but whenever I put my tape on, uh, some people like to pre-cut their pieces. Um, 
every time I seem to do that, I get wrinkles all over the place. So I don't pre-cut my pieces anymore. Um, I just do it right off the tape. And I do that edge. That's all I'm doing, if you notice, is just the edge that I have overlapping, which I have it overlapping just a tiny bit. Matter of fact, I'm gonna pull this back a little bit so you can see, if, if that's in focus, you can see just how little I have it overlapping. Um, on a three quarter inch pay, uh, pipe, that's about as much as I'm gonna overlap. On a, on a half inch pipe, I may overlap more than that. Um, I actually, I will overlap more than that. Um, and it's just, you know, it's some of it's personal preference. Uh, I like to do just three pieces of tape uh, when I tape. Some people will go ahead and use that, that uh, sorry, I like to use four pieces of tape. Some people will go ahead and use that fifth piece to, to bridge that gap that you'll end up being if you overlap too much. I don't like that. The other thing is, is you can kind of see, I don't know how well it's going to show up, but you can kind of see a seam where you're overlapping. I don't like that. If I could, I'd butt it right up against each other. But the thing is, these will swell over time. Um, I've never met one that was perfectly sealed that just wouldn't get moisture in it. And this foam will, will pull in moisture and heat and it'll swell a little bit. When that happens, these gaps will spread out. Um, it seems to happen more on shields to me because they just don't get as well as pre preserved. They don't get as well as sealed. Uh, maybe because you already you have to cut holes into it to uh, to put your straps in it. So they seem to swell a little bit more. And those, even when I haven't had them greatly overlapped, I've had them separate them. And then you get this really ugly white strips and your nice black paint with the glue. You'll end up seeing that. And uh, it's just not cool. Alright, so strip number three. Now you notice I'm not going all the way to the top. Um, now the reason being is because when I do my tip, which you notice there's not a tip on here yet. When I do my tip, um, that's when I will uh, fix that top. Because I'll bring my tip tape all the way down. And again, I'm doing just a, a small amount of overlap. Um, and this is a straight blade. Straight blades are fairly, fairly simplistic. When you start trying to do curved blades, um, and uh, different things like that, that's when some of your tape gets a little bit more complicated. Um, I don't think I've done a curved blade that has not used uh, five strips. Um, it's just the way it is. You'll, you'll, you'll end up gapping. So again, I put that overlap. It's not a, a great overlap. And I just kind of curl down. Now I'm doing it this way uh, very carefully to keep any um, any wrinkles in it um, you know that's kind of kind of the thing of me is, is, is I'll, I'll pull this tape completely off throw it away which is wasteful as hell but if it has bad wrinkles in it I will uh, that's just I can't stand them um, that's just me and I might have overlapped too much Which don't sweat this, you know. You know we'll end up cutting. We'll get to that. Um, so last piece. So obviously this is kind of our, our keystone piece. It's going to overlap both sides. Now you notice that point. What I'm doing is going dead center. I can't start on one side or the other. Uh, well, I could, but it's to me it's easier if I do centered it. That way I can kind of make sure. It's where I want it to be. Now, another thing is, guys, uh, here in the south, it's extremely humid. I normally do not work outside. Um, and, you, know, you see, it, it's not too bad. I normally do not work outside, but it is a beautiful night tonight. Um, it's not very humid at all out here. If it was the least bit humid, I'd be inside with the AC running. 
and a fan going because humid humidity is your is your enemy here uh, if it's too humid your tape will not stick your paint will not stick uh, your glue will take forever to dry so if it's just too humid you know do something to bring that humidity down get a dehumidifier um, you know cut your AC on on blast and put a sweater on if you need to because most uh, most ACs will pull that humidity out um, just just on principle so there we go we got it bladed it's nice and clean um, this paint this tape is so thick you can literally see the edge on here that's what that white is is right there that's the edge of the paint or the edge of the tape I'm not gonna worry about it right now because this one will be painted um, I think I'm gonna do a silver short sword for this or silver long sword so I'm not gonna worry about that